pray that you will share this video with your family and friends. Our scripture tonight comes from Mark 12, verses 30 and 31. And it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. This scripture says it takes all of us, all of you, to love the Lord. Your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, it takes all of that to love the Lord. When I was dead in my sins and on my way to hell, Jesus rescued me. But God had me in mind way back when he formed Adam and Eve from the dust of the ground. God knew Adam and Eve was going to mess up. God knew I was going to mess up. He knew you was going to mess up. But God already had a plan to redeem Adam and Eve to redeem me, to redeem you, back to him, through his son, Jesus Christ. In case you don't understand the word redeem, it means to save us, to free us, because the devil had us. But thank God for Jesus, because God gave his son to die. And that's why I love him more now than ever given me a mind and a desire to want to learn all I can, especially now since I have retired. Yes, I have things on my bucket list that I've always wanted to accomplish and never had the time. Well, on tonight, I'm going to let you hear a little of my Spanish. The song says, more than ever before, Lord, I love you. More than ever before, Lord, I need you. More than ever before, I want to tell you that I love you now. More than ever before. In Spanish, más que nunca, Señor, yo te amo. Más que nunca, Señor, te necesito. Más que nunca, Señor, quiero decirte. Te amo hoy, más que Señor, nunca, Señor. I love you more today than I did before.
God, we lift you. We magnify you. Lord, we love you. We love you more today than we did on yesterday. We love you more every day, Father God. For our moments with you get greater and greater every day. Lord, your word teaches, Father God, that we have new mercies. We have new mercies every morning. And we thank you, Father God, for meeting us every morning with brand new mercies. God, we love you. We praise you. We honor you. We magnify you. We blow you up. We make you big before men. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for being the great God, the big God, the awesome God, the amazing God. Father, we honor you tonight. God, we thank you for being a precious God that looks for us, look over us, watch for us, and watch out for us. God, we thank you for just being that God. Now, Lord, Father, on tonight, we realize that we've messed up. We've fallen short. We've not done the things that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, we ask you to bless us tonight. Keep us, Father God. Keep us focused. Forgive us for our sins, Father God. And bless us as we study your word, that your word will be real to us, that we would tell men, women, boys, and girls about this God we serve. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise, allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Lord, we need you. We need you, Lord. We praise you. Sister Davis, for your multi-talented praises unto the Lord. Thank you so much for, for celebrating the Lord with us tonight. This, he is the awesome, he's the amazing God. He has blessed us again to come into his presence. And we really, really appreciate him for allowing us to be here one more again to celebrate who God is. You ought to celebrate him uh, tonight. We ought to celebrate God on tonight for he is the great God he's the great king he is God all by himself we thank him for just being God let's look at 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 one more time 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 is where we are 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 tonight we'll be dealing with verses 13 14 and 15 try to round out this pericope uh, verses 13, 14, and 15, and then hopefully, if God's willing, we will finish up uh, next week when we deal with uh, the closing verses and the summary of it. If not next week, then the following week. But tonight, we're dealing with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13, 14, and 15. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 through 15 is where we are tonight. <clears throat> The Apostle Paul has been dealing with the second coming of Jesus Christ and the advent of Jesus Christ. He is dealing with the fact that the church is going to be raptured up. He's dealing with the fact that the church will be taken out of this world. He's dealing with the fact in 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians, the fact that after the church is raptured up, then will come the great judgment. Then will come the great tribulation. And so we have to remember that we can make a decision even on tonight, whether we want to be in the rapture to be caught up with the Lord and forever be with the Lord, or whether we want to stay on earth and go through this great tribulation period. So the apostle Paul talks about the fact that God has even presented mankind a great delusion. When men, in Romans chapter 1, it says that men will be turned over to a reprobate mind. Men will be turned over to do what they want to do, any way they want to do it. And I'm telling you today, men have already come to the point in their lives where they are doing everything they want to do, the way they want to do it. And lawlessness is appearing on the scene. He also talks about the fact in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 
that the, the great Antichrist will come on the scene and he will sit even in the temple of God and declare that he is God. The great Antichrist will come and sit in God's church, in God's house, in God's temple and declare that he himself is God. He will exalt himself. He will lift himself up. And men will come unto, unto him. And when men come unto him, they will see him as their God. That day is coming and that day is very near. When we see men doing whatever they want to do, any way they want to do it, anyhow they want to do it, they are living their lives in such a way that unrighteousness is all on the table. My, my, my. But the Bible says that the voice of Jesus Christ will destroy Satan, will destroy the, the works of Satan. The mouth, the breath of Jesus will destroy, and the brightness of his coming will destroy the devil, Satan himself, even his works. You see, the devil may have come to the conclusion and he may have convinced you that he is mighty. The Bible says that the devil will do great exploits. The devil will do things that are miracles and signs and wonders. And it will be true. He would amaze many people. The devil has convinced so many people that he is mighty. But let me tell you tonight, the devil is not almighty. The devil is mighty, but he is not almighty. Only God himself is almighty. The text declares in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that the devil's work, the, the imps of the devil, they will be destroyed. The, 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 per, the person of perdition, the lawless one, will be destroyed by the breath of the mouth of Jesus Christ. They will be destroyed by the brightness of Jesus' second coming. And it says that it has already began to be revealed. You can see unrighteousness. You can see lawlessness all about us. Even in the midst of the former president saying that he is the president of law and order. In the midst of his law and order claim, he was still lawless. The devil is bold. The former president declares that he can even save you without a silly cross. Ungodliness. He also declares that, that he can deal. He is the one that's called to save the world. We have to understand that the devil is bold. So the apostle Paul leaves this eschatology, meaning the, 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 the study of last things, the study of the end times. In verse 13, he moves from eschatology and he moves to soteriology. He deals with the study of salvation, soteriology. The word is spelled S-O-T-E-R- I-O-L-O-G-Y. Again, soteriology, S-O-T-E-R-I-O-L-G-Y. Soteriology. The word soteriology is the study of salvation. So Paul moves from the persecution. He moves from the lack of encouragement, he moves from the second coming, he moves from the, the, the satanic movement that is yet to be built up in such a way that we have not seen yet, and he moves to talk about soteriology. He talks about salvation and sanctification. In these three verses, verses 13, 14, and 15 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he talks about soteriology and how we are to walk. He encourages the early church at Thessalonica to maintain their position in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He encouraged them to don't get discouraged. He encourages them to make sure that they stand firm. Let's look at verse number 13, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. <clears throat> but we are bound to thank God, to give thanks to God always to you, brethren beloved of the Lord. The Apostle Paul says that we are bound. This word bound, this word bound means that we are obligated. We have come to a point in our lives where we are obligated before the Lord. We are obligated to you, 1 Thessalonians, these, this church, the first church at Thessalonians. We are obligated to you to give thanks to the Lord for you. He's thanking the Lord for them, and he says he's doing it always. The reason why he's thanking the Lord for them is because they have turned their lives around. They have walked away from the traditions of this world, and now they find themselves walking in Jesus Christ. As they walk in Jesus Christ, God is able to bless them. So he's saying, I am thankful for you. Not only am I thankful, Timothy is thankful for you. Not only is Timothy thankful, Silas is thankful for you. So we, the authors of second, first and second Thessalonians, we are thankful to you. We're thankful to God for you. He says, but we are bound. We are obligated. We are obligated before God to be thankful for those who walk in Christ Jesus. We ought to be thankful to God for people who are, who are on the same road that we are on. We ought to be thankful to God and we ought to do it consistently. So the Apostle Paul says, I am consistently, we are consistently thanking God for you. He calls them beloved brethren or brethren beloved. He calls them beloved brethren, meaning brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We are thanking God for you always. And you are beloved, my beloved brethren. And we, you are my beloved brethren by the Lord. In other words, because we both have the Lord, because we both are walking in the Lord, because all of us are walking in the Lord, we are brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Life would be so much better if men would look at brothers and commit themselves to think that they are brothers in Christ Jesus. It would be so much better if women would look at other sisters and Christ Jesus and commit in their minds, in their heart, this is my sister in Christ Jesus. And oh, it would be so much better if men and women would look at each other instead of looking at each other as a person of interest, look at them as a person who's in Christ Jesus. It would be so much better. We would treat each other right. We would treat each other better if we always looked at them as brothers and sisters in Christ, made brothers and sisters by the Lord. So he says, I'm always obligated to, to give thanks to the Lord. I'm, I'm praying for you. I'm always obligated to give thanks to the Lord for you, my brother and my sister in Christ. Look at the reason he gives, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification, by the Spirit, and belief in the truth. He says, look, I'm thankful for you. I praise God for you. And this is not a fake praise unto the Lord. You know, when somebody want to dismiss you, sometimes they say, look, Lord bless you. God bless you. I praise God for you. The Apostle Paul, Timothy, and Silas, are, they are for real. And they're saying that we thank God for you and we continually thank God for you. And the reason why we do that is because of God and how God has chosen you. Because from the beginning, he chose you. Let me tell you, we didn't choose God. God chose us. Because we didn't really know how to choose God. We didn't know what to do to choose God, but God chose us. Before the beginning of time, God chose us. He chose us. He, God has predestined us. God has chosen us 
to be with him. God has chosen us unto salvation. Look at what he says here. He says, God, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation. God has chosen you for salvation. In other words, this word salvation means deliverance. This word salvation means, means saved. Mm -hmm. God has chosen you to be saved. Before you were born, God knew that you would be saved. God actually pinpointed you out to be saved. If you're born again tonight, you have been chosen by God to be saved. You didn't choose God. God chose you. And I'm thankful to God that he has chosen me. I am am impressed with God that God has chosen me. Some people have not chosen me, but God has chosen me. During my baseball, basketball, football days, many times playing sandlock ball, I didn't get chosen. Too skinny, too slow, can't jump high enough, can't run fast enough. I was looked over, even though some considered me a superstar, I was looked over because they didn't know who I was, what I could do, how I could perform. And if they had known, maybe they would have chosen me, but they did not choose me. They passed me over. And the reason why they passed me over is because it's all about winning. But I'm thankful to God tonight that God has chosen me. When other men overlooked me, when, when, when people persecuted me, when people misused me, when people discriminated over me, God chose me. Yes, right. I'm reminded growing up in my, my, my sophomore year, I believe, my sophomore year, there was a competition in Mississippi. It was a writing competition. And this writing competition was was geared toward one person out of the the sophomore class that would go and represent the whole school in a writing competition. And if it's one thing that I knew I had down was English and grammar. And when I sit down to write it, I, I, I knew that I had checked it three and four times. I knew I could do it. I was packing a 4.0 average. I was packing it at Mississippi Delta, now it's Mississippi Delta Community College, Mississippi Delta Junior College. I was packing a four point average in English. And I knew that I was qualified to represent the entire school in writing. So it came down to, to myself and a guy that didn't look like me. Mississippi Delta is a predominantly, at least at that time, a predominantly white school. So it came down. I had a 4.0 and this guy had a 4.0. He was shades lighter than I was. And it came down to our final papers. And when it came down to our final paper, I got an A on the paper. He got an A on the paper. Now they have to choose one of us to go represent the whole school in writing, creative writing. And I had chosen to write a a paper concerning the change and the switch in society. Mm -hmm. My paper, and I can remember it today, this is 1983, I can remember it today, my paper was written on a societal change of life essentials. Mm -hmm. A societal change of life essentials. And in that paper, I talked about the fact that we used to, when I was younger, we, we, we had love, hope, and faith. And those three things, those three things held the community together, held family together, held church together. I said, but our society has taken a switch. Our society has changed. No longer do they value love. No longer do they value hope. No longer do they value faith. And I wrote those things down and I I argued my point and I knew I had a good point. I I had my introduction lined out. 
in my introduction, I said, I'm going to tell, I'm going to talk about these three things. In my body, I talked about those three things. In my conclusion, I repeated and I told them what I'd already told them in my conclusion. Perfect paper. She gave me an A plus. I got my A plus. And now it's between him and me. And one of us, only one of us can go represent the school. I was a few shades darker. The teacher, Miss Benton, took our papers back up. She regraded my paper. And she gave me a B instead of A+. Plus. Oh. So you know, he represented the school. I had been passed over. I had been looked over. And there's no doubt in my mind, I know I was looked over because of the color of my skin. Mm. They couldn't have me represent the whole school, of course, not on a state level. But the Apostle Paul says here, even though men, women, people overlook you, God has chosen you. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that God has chosen me. I may not represent the state of Mississippi in 1983. I may not represent the state of Texas in 2021. But one thing I do know, even in 1980, God chose me. So the text declares in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, he says, God from the beginning of time, chose you. God chose us before there was a when or where. God chose us before we even existed. God has chosen you. Aren't you glad about it? That God has chosen you. He goes on to say that God has chosen you for salvation. There's that word, soteriology, the study of salvation. The study of salvation, soteriology, God has chosen us for salvation. This word salvation means that he has chosen us to be saved. He has, he has chosen us to be delivered. He has chosen us to not go to hell, but to go to heaven. God has chosen us. That's good news. That's good news. He has chosen us for salvation through sanctification by the spirit and belief in the truth. So if God has chosen us, God is all wise. God is all knowing. God is, is they, here comes the word. The word is, is omniscient, meaning omniscience. God is all knowing. He knows everything. Not only is he omnipotent, meaning that he's almighty and he's all powerful, he is also omniscient, I'm the science, meaning he knows everything. Yes. And not only is he omniscient, not only is he uh, omnipotent, he is also omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. You can't go anywhere without bumping into God. Amen. Even when you think you're hiding in the dark, God is right there. That's right. The psalmist says in Psalms 139, he says like this. He says that you can make your bed in hell. God is there. You can go to the highest mountain. God is there. And, and the good thing about it is the songwriter declares to us, even tonight, that, that there is nobody greater than the God we serve. He says, I, I searched the world over and there's nobody greater. He says, I climbed the highest mountain and I couldn't find anybody greater. There's nobody greater than God himself. So God has chosen us unto salvation through sanctification by the Holy Spirit and the belief in the truth. This is how God, this is what, this is the role we play. The role we play because God has chosen us for salvation through sanctification. This word sanctification is our holy walk before the Lord. Our holy walk. It, it is our holy, H-O-L-I, H-O-L-Y, holy, holy walk. 
So we have to walk in holiness. God has chosen us for salvation through sanctification. In other words, because we are saved, we walk uprightly. We don't walk uprightly in order to be saved. We don't declare our deeds or do our deeds in order to be saved. We are saved, then we walk uprightly. Because our deeds, our doing cannot save us. It is what God has done through Jesus Christ on Calvary that saves us. So here we have salvation which is justification. Salvation comes through justification. God commends his son to us and we are declared righteous even though we are sinners, we are declared righteous. People ask the question all the time, what if I die in my sin? You see, your sin or a lack of your sin did not save you because you're constantly sinning. Because you stopped sinning, it didn't save you. You got saved through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And so it's not what you have done, it's what he has done on Calvary. He died, he was buried, he rose, and he was seen, and that's what saved you. But this is the part we play. We walk in sanctification. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us. The Holy Spirit makes us holy. We cannot be holy. We don't know how to be holy. Yes. Matter of fact, our sin nature keeps popping up. Our sin nature keep coming up. Our sin nature keep pulling us back into sin. It's our sin nature. Ours, because we have a sin nature, we love to sin. We get a thrill out of sinning. That's what guys talk about when they say, I remember the good old days is because they have not forgotten their sinful days. And because they have not forgotten their sinful days, what happens is they have gotten to a point where they remember the days they were in sin. Mm -hmm. And as they remember the days they were in sin, then they said, oh man, wasn't those some good old days? No, they weren't good old days because you were on your way to hell. Mm -hmm. So salvation snatched us from hell. Man. Salvation snatched us from the fire, from the, like an a iron from the burning. Salvation moved us from going to hell to going to heaven. And then sanctification is what we commit to God. We are set aside. We are different. We have to make sure that we walk according to the word of God. That's where it comes in where he says, he says, belief in the truth. So we are saved and we are sanctified by what we believe in the truth. The Holy Spirit makes us who we are. The Holy Spirit works with our heart. The Holy Spirit works with our mind. The Bible teaches that we cannot even come to Christ. We don't have sense enough to come to Christ. But the Holy Spirit draws us. The Holy Spirit leads us. The Holy Spirit makes us who we are as we yield, voluntarily yield unto him. Will you yield to him tonight? Will you allow Christ to make you over again? The, the Holy Spirit regenerates us and gets us ready to be among the flock, among the bride without a spot or a wrinkle. Jesus is coming back to get a bride, a church, without a spot or a wrinkle. Paul says to this church at Thessalonica, walk in the truth. Mm -hmm. Believe in the truth. This truth he's talking about is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, he presented very elementary principles to them. The elementary principle is the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Back home, if a preacher gets up to preach or a teacher gets up to teach, if he or she does not present the gospel of Jesus Christ, the senior saints back home would say, he just had a good speech. He did no preaching. Mm -hmm. All right. Because preaching comes when you present the gospel of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. He says, continue, new converts. Mm -hmm. Continue your belief in the truth. The reason why he had to keep reminding them to continue in the truth 
is because they were in the middle of persecution, because the devil was running rapid, because the devil was trying to pull them back across the line. So Paul, the apostle Paul says, I'm always praying for you. He says, matter of fact, all the rest of the saints of God are praying for you too. And that's what we ought to do. We ought to be praying for each other. When somebody uh, falls in sin, we ought not beat them down. We ought to pray for them. Amen. We ought not talk about them. We ought to pray for them. Lift them up in the name of Jesus. Yes. So God, in his sovereign will, <clears throat> have called us to salvation. He has called us to, to this soteria state. The word soteria in soteriology, the word soteria means salvation. The word ology is the study of. Therefore, soteriology is the study of salvation. So God is warning us. God is telling us. The apostle Paul is pleading with us. Whatever you do, keep believing in the truth. There are too many things around us that we are believing in because it's something new on the scene. I told you two weeks ago, I said to you two weeks ago, the problem with mankind is that we believe we need a new thing. And we read the scripture that says God is doing a new thing. And we try to figure out how we can make it something that no one else know about. But it's the gospel of Jesus Christ, the <laughs> common, everyday, simple gospel of Jesus Christ that men need. That's right. The fact that Jesus died on Calvary, gave his life, rose from the dead, the simple gospel. That's who make who we are. That's who make us who we are. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus Christ and his death on Calvary is the only thing that could save us. And he did it. We didn't do a thing. The only thing we can do is believe the gospel. Let's look at verse number 14, 2 Thessalonians chapter 4. Chapter 2, rather, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. He goes on to say that not only did the Holy that you're saved by the Holy Spirit, you're sanctified by the Holy Spirit, and that you believe in the truth to which he, to which he be to which he called you by our gospel. We've been called by the gospel. So verse 13 says that, that God has blessed us to be saved because God chose us. Verse 14 says, we've been called. We've been called by the gospel. Don't get this word called mixed up with a preacher being called a priest. We are all called who are saved. We are all called by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He says, he says to which he called you by our gospel. Paul says, we've been preaching this gospel. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 5, he breaks it down. He says, first of all, I presented to you the only thing that I have lived by. The only thing that I preach to you is what I have been saved by. And that which I've been saved is the gospel. He says, I have delivered unto you the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then he begins, verse 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 3. He says, he says that Jesus died for your sins according to the scripture. Then he goes on to say that he was buried and he rose according to the scripture. And then he was seen first by the twelve, first by Cephas, who is Timothy, first by Cephas, then Peter, rather, Cephas, by Cephas, Peter, he was seen by Cephas, then by the 12, and then by over 500 men at one time. Then Apostle Paul says, and he was lastly seen by me, one who was called to be apostle out of due season. Mm -hmm. To which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We are to only have glory in Jesus Christ. Stop glorifying yourself. Glorify Jesus Christ so the Lord can lift you up. Right. Don't pat yourself on the back. Don't give yourself the glory. Allow God to give you the glory. Uh, uh, obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is his glory. 
We walk, we speak, we live, we are sanctified through the glory of Jesus Christ. We are born again. We have salvation through Jesus Christ. So it's never about what you have done. It's about what Jesus has done on Calvary and what Jesus done, did when he rose from the dead. Our commitment is, first of all, to believe the gospel. That is salvation. That grants us justification, just as if we had never sinned. He, he commits to us. He commends us as being saved, as being righteous. He, Jesus makes us righteous. We can't even make our own self righteous. Jesus makes us righteous. And then he says, the thing that you can continually do is sanctification. Be holy, be set aside, be different, be changed. You see, this word sanctification means to be purified. Be pure in your motives, be pure in your actions, be pure in your lifestyle so that others will see your lifestyle and they will see that you are pure. Finally, verse number 15. Therefore, brother, stand fast. Hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. He says, therefore, brother, therefore those who are saved, Stand fast, meaning to hold fast. Stick with it. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. Keep trusting Jesus. Keep trusting God. Keep trusting the Holy Spirit regardless of what happens. If you can't do what you used to do, keep trusting God. If you can't go where you used to go, keep trusting God. If you can't act the way you used to act, bless God because you are being sanctified. You are being changed. You see, salvation is a one-time event. Sanctification is a lifetime commitment. You see, we are renewed every day. That's sanctification. We have to be renewed every single day. We have to be renewed over and over again. That's sanctification. We have to be reminded that you got to stop messing up. We have to be reminded of that. Saved people have to stand fast. The apostle Paul says, stand fast. He says, hold to the traditions. Hold the traditions by which you've been taught. Hold the traditions where you've been taught through the word, by the word. Hold the traditions that you've been taught through our writings, our epistles. Whatever you do, don't quit on God. God hasn't quit on you. Mm -hmm. If you're saved, if you're born again, you ought to not only just be recognized as someone who is born again, someone who has salvation, you ought to also be recognized as someone who has sanctification. You, you're, you're living a holy life. You're living a life no, you're not perfect. No, you're not going to do all the wrong, right things. Some things you're going to miss the mark on. Some things, temptation is going to take over. But let me share with you, you ought to be holy. You ought to be set apart. You ought to be different because you're saved. You have the Holy Spirit in you. The songwriter declares, he walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. Let me share with you. He says, what you've been taught, stick to it. What you read in the word, stick to it. What you have seen and read in our epistles, hold fast to it. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. God loves you. God has a, a wonderful plan for your life. Live for the Lord and let others see you living for the Lord. Get into it wholeheartedly. Don't let people tell you stuff. It doesn't take all that. It may not take all that for them, but for me, I was sinking deep in sin. I was sinking far from the distant show, but the master, mm -hmm. I was deeply staying within, but the master, I was on my way to hell, but the master of the sea heard my 
fair and craft and from the waters from the murk in the mouth from the from the depths of hell he lifted me and the songwriter declares now safe am i and since god has lifted me i ought to trust him since god has lifted me i ought to live for him since god has lifted me i ought to celebrate him and I like the Apostle Paul. I like Timothy. I like Saul. Uh, Saul I like uh, Saul. We ought to, Silas, we ought to all refer to other people and pray for them because we're obligated and we're bound to pray for them. Mm -hmm. If you're listening to me tonight, this is your moment to get to know Jesus. You can get to know him through salvation. And if you're already saved, you can get to know him better through sanctification. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. The word of God, as it has gone forth, you ought to respond to the word of God tonight. The apostle Paul says, keep the tradition, keep the custom. In other words, you've been taught what is right. You've been taught the word of God. You've been taught the gospel. Stick with it. Hold fast. Stand fast. Hold on to those traditions. Some traditions we ought to get rid of. But when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ, we got to stick with it. I said to you, men are creating all kinds of denominations. Those are denominations. Forget about them. When it comes to the gospel, stick with it. People often ask, what, what kind of church you go to? My, re my reply, it's a Christian church. Yeah, but I mean, is it Methodist, is it Baptist? It's, it's a word church. It is built on the word of God. The, the organism of the church, it exists because of the divine truths of the word of God. And whenever you negotiate, whenever you compromise the powerful word of God, you're letting pure pressure, discrimination, persecution, or other things of this world get to you. Never compromise. It is the word of God that makes us who we are. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ that saves us. If you're listening to me today, you need to be born again. You need to be saved. You need salvation. The only thing that's going to get you to heaven is being born again, having salvation through Jesus Christ. The door is open. The door is open. And if you have never received him, you can receive him tonight by just honestly believing the story that Jesus died, he was buried, he rose, and he was seen. If you can believe this story tonight, you can be saved right where you are. You don't have to have the preacher come in the room. You don't have to have a hoop. You don't, you don't have to have the musicians playing. You really don't have to be in a church building. You can be saved right here, right now. The door is open. If you would, just repeat after me and invite Jesus Christ into your life. Let us pray. And as I pray, I want you to pray and repeat after me. Invite Jesus in your life, believing the story of his death, burial, and resurrection. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. 
We believe if you honestly prayed this prayer, trusting the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we believe now you have salvation. We believe now that you're saved. We believe now that you've been justified. Even though you're not righteous, you've been, you've been committed as righteous. You've been justified. I want to say to you today that you're on your way to heaven. Please let me know if you've received Christ tonight. I want to celebrate with you. There may be others of you who are saved, who walk in salvation, who live in salvation, who know that you're on your way to heaven. But for some reason or the other, sanctification is not on your list. For some reason or the other, sanctification, walking in the Lord Jesus Christ, has not been a thing of your past. I want to pray with you tonight. I want you to get it right with God. Recommit to Him rededicate to him be renewed every day let us pray father god we thank you now for blessing us to be saved we thank you for saving our souls now lord we ask you to bless us that we will walk in holiness that we will walk without sin that we will live our lives for you father god the way you would have us live and lord we ask you to secure us touch our hearts touch our minds Bless us to realize that the, the Holy Spirit leads, guides, talks to us, and he blesses us. Lord, I ask you, Father God, to bless us to recommit, rededicate, renew our commitment unto you. And Lord, we ask you to keep us focused and in your will. That sanctification will be what we see, we experience, and sanctification will be what others see in us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. There may be others who, who don't have a church home or you're in between church homes. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention, where Jesus is the main attraction. Well, Jesus is the captain of the ship. If you want to join and be a member, whether you're local or whether you're distant, just inbox me and let me know that you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church. And we will welcome you to this great church in Southeast Houston where God is doing great things. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our Bible study on tonight. Thank you for being with us. During our prayer time, we want to lift up the Marshall family in time of bereavement. We want to lift up Rodney Williams and for his health. We want to lift up Sharon Chadwick and her family and the passing of her niece. And left, she has left two young children. We want to lift up Bridget and Eli Johnson. We want to lift up Patricia and Barbara Robertson. And we want to lift up Nicholas and Rhonda Wynn and their entire family in the in bereavement, in their time of bereavement. We want to lift up Sister Lorreen Orr, Sister Davis' mother, my mother-in-law. We want to lift up Eloise Johnson. And we want to lift up the Velasquez family. The Velasquez family was attacked by COVID-19, and we want to lift up Chelsea and their entire family. Will you join me in prayer? Father God, we've called out names. We ask you to bless as only you can. Strengthen as only you can. Heal as only you can. Comfort as only you can. Bless even these small children that were left behind. We ask you to bless them and grow them up to be missionaries for you, to have a fire burning in their hearts. Heal the sick, comfort the bereaved, give wisdom and knowledge to those who are going astray. Bless in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. It is offering time, and it's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts.
Come on, Sister David, celebrate it. It's time to give to the Lord. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. You can do so by mailing your, your checks or money orders in to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. 77459. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is as we lift Jesus, he will draw all men unto himself. Let us continue to pray for each other. Let us continue to give. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We ask you to bless every giver, bless every tither, bless every sacrificial gift, and every sacrificial giver. Bless, Father God, that they will have no want. Lord, we thank you for this privilege of your word. We thank you for this privilege of giving. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, be glory, and dominion, until we meet again, let us all say amen, amen, amen. At the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.